I'm going to be taking you through a real-time demo of Ansys Discovery that will give you a flavour of the power of the software for upfront design exploration. So we're going to be doing design exploration on a liquid valve housing. We're going to start with a CFD or fluid analysis on the flow characteristics of the internals of the valve. We can then use our geometry modelling tools within Discovery to make design changes and see how they will instantly affect the simulation. What we'll then do is actually explore potential different manufacturing methods. So maybe we're looking at uh, manufacturing this part using an additive approach. So if we're going to be using an additive approach, maybe we've got a bit more design freedom so we can take the values from our fluid simulation, um, in this instance the pressure values, to perform an FEA analysis on our part and then use this to optimise and reduce the weight of the part using our topology optimization tools within ANSYS Discovery. So first of all I'm just going to open up the part. So this is the um, model that we'll be working with throughout our um, demo. Um, so first of all let's take a look at the internals of the, um, the model just so we get a better understanding of what's going on. Um, I'm just going to select on the axis and go into a, a section mode or a sketch mode just to uh, so I can see the internals of our part. So to better understand the internal flow characteristics of this valve firstly we need to extract our fluid volume and we've got a number of tools within ANSYS Discovery that allow us to do this. One of them is in the prepare tab and it's the volume extract tool, a really powerful tool um, to extract volumes. And the second way is actually in our simulation tab to use our quick start guides. And here we can do um, internal flow or external flow. I'm going to be doing an internal flow. So we can use these quick start guides to very quickly extract a, uh, a fluid volume as well. So the first step is to select your inlet faces or face. I've only got one face in this instance, but you can use multiple. And then I can select my outlet face. So once I've done this, my fluid volume will be created, which hopefully we can see here. And um, if we look to the left hand side, we can see what we call our like, physics setup. So these are all our conditions. So we can see our material that we're using. In this instance, it's water. We can change this um, or create your own materials, but I'm going to stick to, to water in this instance because that's what it is. Um, and then we can see our inlet and outlet conditions as well. So we can see we've got zero pressure on the outlet. If I um, double click on the inlet, we can hit C here. We can change this to mass flow rate, a pressure, swirling flow. And we can also work in different units as well. So we can see hopefully those there. Um, for this instance, I'm going to leave these as the, um, the defaults. And once you've got your fluid volume, in, we look to the right hand corner, our solve button becomes available and we can click the solve button and within a few seconds we'll get some results. Because we're in the explore mode and that's using the power of the, um, the GPU, the graphics processor, we get results very, very quickly. Um, so I'm going to hit the solve button now. Instantly as I click that, we get starting to see results. The, sim the simulation is still solving at the moment and we can see this sort of bar going around here showing that it's solving. In a few seconds that will hopefully complete, which it has done now. And we can start to um, visualize our results. So at the moment we're looking at um, vector velocities. Uh, we can see this here. Um, we can animate this and that will hope potentially show us these sort of recirculation zones. Um, there are other ways of viewing the results as well. We can look at contours, we can look at ISO surfaces, we can look at streamlines, we can look at particles, and we can also look at direction field. So when looking at this, we can potentially see these areas of sort of recirculation in the model. One nice way to sort of view these is using our vector velocities. Um, and here we have the option to sort of modify these. I'm going to increase the thickness slightly. I'm going to increase the count as well. Uh, far too much. But, um, let's increase the count slightly. And then I'm going to change it to magnitude. And actually, I, do, I only want to show these areas of um, sort of low velocity. So where these sort of areas of... Um, uh, recirculation are so we can start to 
sort of visualize these and if i hit the animation we can also hit the play tool and start to visualize these so we can sort of see they're in these sort of corner corner areas these um low velocity sort of um recirculation so as to improve so to improve performance we'd hopefully want to try and reduce these as, as, as much as possible so um now we know where these are we can potentially use some of our modeling tools to make some design changes so i'm going to look now back into this uh the vector and i'm going to go into a um, a design mode so we can then start to make potentially some some design changes and see what instantly what effect these have on our um, simulation so using some of my design tools i'm going to use the pull tool i can then make a, a design change so i'm going to actually increase the radius and this we can actually type in a, a value but i'm just going to manually eyeball it just for the purpose of the demo uh, but we can type in a value but i'm going to just increase it and as i increase that um, radius we can instantly see the simulation sort of update and we can see the effect of your um, your modeling change has on that simulation whether it makes it better, improves it, or makes it worse. Um, so if I make a couple of design changes, as we make these design changes, we can also obviously monitor um, values. So pressure drop might be um, something that you're looking to monitor. And we can see here that making that first design change, we've seen our pressure drop um, decrease. Um, so again, making another design change, let's do the same on the, the this radius here, and just make a, another design change and as you iterate your design these values will update and you can see the effect that the changes you have affects the model so once that's done we'll make one more um, design change so we can see them making that change down there actually increase the pressure drop um, so you know maybe that's not what you're looking for so you can always undo or remove that change let's also see what happens if we actually modify the size of this sort of uh, valve stem here what about if we've got the opportunity now because we're 3d printing it we've got some different manufacturing options so we've got a bit more design freedom so let's um decrease that again i'm just making a, another design change just so we can see as we're designing we can validate our results and see actually what the effect is that we're having on this part So we can see again how that changed. So maybe this radius here wasn't the best thing to change, but um, the other th other design changes um, would be okay. So um, once I've um, made these changes and I've obviously studied this in a CFD example, my next step might be actually to optimize the uh, the design of this part. So what we're going to do now is actually take this part and make some changes to it and actually optimize it based on potentially the results you got from your cfd um, simulation so now we're going to optimize our part for um, a new manufacturing process in this instance additive manufacturing so if we were going to 3d print this at the moment this part's made up out of a few different components um, we might want to um, we might be able to print this in sort of one um, one component so I've just, um, first of all, I'm going to hide my volume and hide the um, internal component because we're just going to be focused on the outer shell. So if we can print this out of one component, the first thing I might do is actually merge these three components into one. So I'm just box selecting them again, using our modeling tools within Discovery. And I'm going to hit the combine tool and make that all one solid. So that's all now one solid. Um, we could also potentially start to simplify and improve our design space. Um, what this allows us to do is if we simplify and improve our design space, it allows the software then, then to come up with the optimal um, load paths and optimal design locations to sort of remove material from. So um, to do this, we can start to use some of our discovery modeling tools, great modeling prep tool in itself. Um, I'm going to just use the, the fill tool to get rid of um, radiuses and then i'm going to use my pull tool which is this one next to it just to sort of increase these areas so you can start to see making these changes just using my um, fill tool i can start to get rid of 
rads that I don't want. We could make some more like sort of drastic changes as well. Uh, one thing I could do is potentially copy and paste this edge and I'm then going to actually pull this area up. Um, I'm going to specify a certain height. I'm going to say I'm going to pull it up to this height. I'm then going to use my fill tool to cap off this area. So this is all capped off now. And I'm going to do the same on the underside. So we basically end up with just a large cylindrical area here. So this is quite a drastic change, um, but this shows you the power of discovery. We can then use our combine tool, which is um, might be known as a Boolean tool in other softwares. So this is my target. I'm going to chop it away from this one. And this allows us then to remove these areas. So we can see the um, what I'm left with is this. If I just hide my other one, we can see that it's now chopped around my solid. And, I've, and I haven't got rid of the internals. So let's just turn these two back on. And then obviously, you know, if, if this, is, this is quite a drastic change, it might not be the exact what you want, but um, using the combine tool then, I can then merge these two together. So here we're just showing off sort of the power of Discovery's modeling tools as well. And now you can make very, very quick design changes to, um, to affect things. We've done a bit of um, model prep and for the purpose of um, the demonstration, I'm just going to just sort of blue Peter S this show the uh, one I created earlier, sort of the, the uh, my, my finished product to save a bit of time. And um, this is my modified design now. So now we can start to run um, or set up our topology optimization. So first of all, I'm going to go back into my explore mode. And this is our fluid flow simulation. So I'm now going to actually create a new simulation and we can start to set up our structural simulation and then turn on optimization. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to select some fixed supports. So what I'm going to do is select on this this hole here and I want all these holes to be fixed supports. And rather than selecting them all manually, I can use what we call our our power select. So I can select all the equal radiuses and all the coincident faces. And you can see how quickly I've just selected those. Um, I can create name selections as well if I want to come back to those later on. Um, and I'm going to specify those as fixed. We can add bolts and bolt preloads and all that. But for the purpose of the demo, I'm going to say that these are just fixed supports. So using my power select, I'm going to say that's also a fixed support. And then I'm going to just specify these faces as well. And they're going to be fixed supports. So once I've done that, um, I'm then going to um, uh, apply a pressure to the internal um, fluid volume or fluid boundary condition. To actually extract that boundary condition, again, we can use another really powerful tool in Discovery. Um, again, we can go into selection, select using boundary. So this time I'm going to add a boundary. These are my sort of bounding faces. And then select a seed face, and that's any internal face. And now you can see we've just extracted that boundary and to that boundary I'm going to apply a pressure and obviously these pressure values could be taken from the earlier fluid simulations that we've done I'm going to just uh, apply a 200 I think that was one of the values I saw earlier um, and then our setup is complete so we can now do a an FEA um, analysis on this part so if we click the solve button now in the right hand side we'll start to get results on our part and i've just accidentally included too much in my simulation so i'm going to just exclude those so you can see on the left hand side what's included and included excluded in your simulation and all this shouldn't be included so this is the only part that should be included in the simulation um, so we can animate this we can show how this part may behave. Uh, this probably will be over exaggerated. Um, we can start to look at areas of, of stress on the part. Um, factor of safety, these sorts of things, obviously important to designers. Um, but once you've done that and we actually want to reduce the mass of this part uh, for potentially 3D printing, we can go into our topology optimization tab. And we can then set up our optimization targets. So first of all, we can choose what we're looking to do, whether it's remove excess material, maximize stiffness, all these sorts of things. Um, so I might choose in this instance, let's say remove excess material. 
Um, we can choose um, how aggressive you want to be, so the, the target, and then you can also add manufacturing constraints. So if you are going to be machining this part, obviously we're going to be 3D printing it, so you might want to add a, um, a table direction or overhang project prevention for 3D printing. Um, if you're molding this part, you can add your, your constraints. Also, I'm actually going to decrease our protected depth, and that's um, protected area, so it will remove more material. So I'm going to say 0.3. And um, you'll see that this protected area then just uh, decreases this, this pink area. So once I've got that set up, I can then start to solve my simulation. So if I hit the solve button now. So now that I've started the simulation, um, we will start to see material be removed from this body. Um, we can start to see the areas of material removal and this is based on our optimization settings and obviously our structural setup as well. Once your part has uh, finished optimizing, uh, we can then actually add the optimized body to the model and we end up with something a little bit like this um, the great thing about discovery again the power of discovery what we're able to do is one thing you can obviously do is straight away create a validation simulation on the optimized part make sure again it is going to be um, uh, it is going to pass um, and still be fit for purpose but another nice thing is we can actually use this tool here called smooth facets and it intelligently smooths the facets based on again your all your supports and stuff so it uses the geometry from the supports that you um, actually created in the first place um, so you can see now we've got nice clean areas where these supports were and let's just uh, hide that so we can see we've now got a much smoother part that may be more preferable to 3d printing um, the areas where our internal geometry are they are regions still all these regions that we can actually. so if you want to go one step further and actually convert your now STL back into a solid format um, we can do that again just using your right click convert to solid using surfaces within a few seconds you'll end up with a result that looks like um, this so this is now a, a solid format that can be um, modified for one uh, just to show you I am changing the size of a hole so you might not want to do that in real life but um shows that we can obviously modify the data any internal data that we need to because this is CAD data and then we've got the more organic optimized structure on the on the outside so um hopefully this demo has given you a bit of a flavor of the um, power of discovery